What's up guys, Jason here. Today we're gonna to be talking about running lingo and I'm gonna introduce you to my running closet. All right, so let's talk about the lingo. So in the running shoe world, there's a few key things to remember. So when you go to a running store and you go to buy a pair of shoes, um, one of the things they'll talk about is the stack height. So the stack height is referring to the amount of shoe or cushion underneath your foot. So in most Adidas shoes, you have a pretty moderate level stack height. Um, I don't remember the exact specs on this particular model, uh, but just know the stack height is how much shoe is underneath you. So there's a few different ends of the spectrum. There's a minimalist kind of mindset where there's not a ton of, of shoe underneath you, uh, but there's also on the other side, there's the maximal or max cushion mindset where there's a ton of cushion underneath you. So let's see here. So let's compare these two shoes for a second. So this is the Hoka Infinite and this is the Ultra Solstice. So the Ultra is known for zero drop, which we'll talk for talk about in a little bit. Um, but in this shoe, there's a lot less cushion underneath you compared to the Infinite that has a fair amount of cushion and, and shoe underneath you. So that's talking about the stack height. So with stack height comes the drop or the heel to toe offset is another way to talk about it. So uh, there's a wide range from zero all the way to about 12 is about as high as it gets. Um, in most of the shoes I run in, which are Adidas, uh, the, the, the drop is anywhere between 10 to 12 millimeters. Now, why would that be important? So uh, when people tend to get fatigued at the end of a race or end of a run or just in general, uh, a lot of times they'll start to land on their heel a little bit more than the midfoot. So when you land on your heel, in my case anyways, um, it's good for me to have a little bit more cushion in the heel just because when I'm running, that's the first thing that's going to hit the ground. Not like this or you know anything crazy, but just having a little bit extra back there helps protect my heels a little bit more. Um, there's other shoes like Ultra that have a zero drop. So that zero drop, all it's saying is the heel, the amount of, or how high your heel is off the ground is the same as the front of the foot. So if this is 10 millimeters in the front, this is also 10 millimeters in the back. And that's the heel to toe offset, that's the zero drop. Um, there's shoes that kind of range in the middle of that. So you have the Hoka Cliftons, which are about are a max cushion shoe. So they have a big stack height but the heel to toe offset or the drop is kind of mid range. It's about six to seven millimeters uh, between the back and the front. Um, so that's stack height. Uh, the last thing we're gonna talk about is neutral versus stability shoes. So neutral shoes, all it's saying is there's not any, uh, any mechanism to prevent your foot from hyperpronating. Um, so it's kind of like if you were to ride a bike with no training wheels, that would be like a neutral shoe. And then when you put the training wheels on, that would kind of be like a stability shoe. Um, so in, in my case, so in a lot of shoes, you'll notice right here, let's see if I get this to focus. Usually on the medial or middle side of the shoe and the heel, there'll be a little added area right here. That's called the post. That post acts as a kind of a like a crutch or a brace. So when you land, rather than land and roll all the way through, you land and stop you about midway before you push off. Now you're still landing a little bit on the outside and kind of rolling towards the inside, but that post in the back helps protect that. Um, that being said, most of my shoes are neutral shoes. Um, the uh, the uh, Adios Boost from a few years ago has a little mini post um, in its shoe, not a stability shoe by any means. In fact, it's actually more of a racing shoe than it is anything else. Um, but yeah, so that little mini post. So if you were to go to a shoe store and say, okay, uh, there's some stability shoes. And anytime you see a shoe with a great big kind of plastic piece right there, that would be a, a post. That would be a stability shoe. So you obviously I have a lot of shoes, <laughs> no kidding there. Um, but some of my favorite shoes, uh, probably my favorite right now is the Boston eights by Adidas. Um, so I've been running in the Bostons for a few a few generations now. I have the eights, I've had a couple pairs of sixes. Um, I even have a pair of the four or fives. These bad boys right here. Um, these were actually my first pair of Bostons. 
Um, but I really like them because it's lightweight. I don't like big clunky shoes. Um, compared to like the launch, the launch is, is the Brooks launch is kind of their, their entry level neutral shoe with uh, kind of a typical 10 to 11 millimeter drop in the back or from the back to the front. Um, so compared to these two shoes, while the launch is pretty light, I do like having a little bit less shoe underneath me. Um, I don't remember the exact specs, but from my uh, personal experience and from uh, me running in it, I feel like I still get a good amount of, of connection with the ground, if you will, but still have a lot of support in the back. Um, so that's the Boston 8. Uh, probably another one of my favorite shoes would be, um, let's see, would be the Boston edition of the Audios from a few years ago. So this is pretty similar to the Boston Marathon Edition, I should clarify. Um, so the Bostons, except the Audios is a little bit lighter. Um, the Audios is made a little bit more for racing. And um, while you can still use it for other things, I tend to use this shoe if I'm doing speed work, um, kind of like long tempos or long intervals. That's usually what I'm putting my, my feet into. Um, that being said, I also have some shoes that I use for recovery miles. Um, I have a few pairs of Hoka's, um, some Saucony's, etc. So my rotation. So I have a lot of shoes here. So in my world, I tend to kind of rotate through. Now, there is no research that says rotating shoes makes your shoes last longer in terms of shoe life. Now, in theory, if you have six pairs of shoes and you wear a different shoe every single day, yeah, of course your shoes are gonna last longer because you're only wearing it one time a week. So in terms of time, you're getting a longer life out of it. In terms of mileage, you're still getting about the same. So that's kind of where there's this, uh, I shouldn't call it a myth, but kind of this, this folklore where you need to have at least two or three pairs of shoes to cycle through um, to make them last longer. That being said, uh, having shoes of different variety helps strengthen the muscles in the feet and the legs. So I'm not saying run in like a super steep drop one day and a zero drop the, uh, the next day. That is, don't do that. You will get hurt and you will be in a lot of pain and you'll just get frustrated. Um, what I tend to do is I mix up my Adidas shoes. So I run in Adidas. I'll usually wear these for, for longer days. I'll put on um, my older pair of Bostons um, just because they have a little bit more miles on them. I'll usually tend to use these just for speed. That way I'm not putting tons of miles on worn out shoes. Um, but I also have a more of racing style shoes in my Adios by Adidas. So these are a little bit lighter than the Boston's, um, but I tend to use these more for, for speed. So in any given week, I'm running five to six days a week, but what I'll do is I try and wear a different pair of shoes um, every other day or so. So I won't wear like one shoe three days in a row or anything like that. I'll try and cycle through just so I can continue to work on those muscles in my feet. Um, some shoes have more, more mileage on them, etc. cetera. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the bulk of my training. Um, I mean, I have, I have racing shoes as well. Racing, sho racing shoes are pretty lightweight. Do not do any substantial amount of mileage in these shoes. Again, do not do any substantial amount of mileage in any kind of racing shoe that is lightweight and made just for racing. While it is light and it may feel great, you will get hurt. That is a guarantee. So that is my disclaimer. Um, but yeah, so racing shoes, racing flats is another word for them. Um, they tend to be pretty lightweight, have a very low stack height, usually minimal drop. Um, same thing with these Adidas. Um, but yeah, I use them just for racing. Don't wear them any other time. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of my, my rotation. Um, I have some shoes that I haven't worn yet or I don't wear very often, but, um, most of my shoes in terms of mileage, I'll get anywhere from at least five to 600 miles on them. Now that's not the case for everyone. Um, me personally, because I am pretty light on my feet. I'm able to use shoes for longer amounts of time. Um, I do have some pairs of shoes that I have, you know, eight or 900 miles on them. Um, that's kind of an anomaly that goes with Adidas Boost mid, mid foam, mid sole foam that's made to last a little bit longer. Um, but we'll make another video about that. Um, but yeah, so this is my shoe rotation and I hope that helps.